Deformations is quite a structured collection. It has two sequences and they have a bridge between them, which is a kind of selection of lyrical poems. The first sequence is about the artist and letter cutter and um, typeface designer Eric Gill, who was pretty influential in the first half of the 20th century. The sequence looks at um, Gill's life and work in light of revelations that he abused his children, that he was a serial womanizer and abuser of women. And I suppose it deals with, in, to some extent, the, the, the meeting of aesthetic and ethic, um, the way that artistic subjectivity um, can deform as well as ennoble. The sequence on the page is quite visual. There are lots of different poems, they're very varied, um, they have different shapes. There's a poem which is a very shaped poem. It's not, it's not without humour, um, it's, it's uh, quite a collective exercise. I've brought lots of voices into it um, and translations and quotes. It brings in material from Gill's diaries, from books about Gill, biographies of Gill, so it's, um, there's a lot of voices in it. It's certainly not just Gill's voice alone. In fact, I've said that it's written in the voice of water, which is best at recording disaster. And that seemed a way of expressing the fluidity of the sequence overall. The second sequence in the book, Pity Sad, in some ways is drawn out of the concerns of the first sequence. And it looks at the Odyssey. It draws material from the Odyssey, characters, themes, episodes, and reworks them in light of, I suppose, views, feelings about modern warfare and modern military activity and displacement of peoples. Um, I wanted to consider how some of the events and episodes in the Odyssey might really have played out or might, might play out. The other thing that's particular about this sequence is that it all seems to happen at the same time. It has a sort of synchronicity about it. One of the things that struck me about art, it is the resting place of trauma disaster, hard things, high feelings, and it covers those over. So when we see a finished piece of art, we don't necessarily trace back through it to the trauma that caused it, to the devastation, to the disaster that deformed the person who made the art. And so that is in some ways what the title relates to, the sort of deforming that happens to us um, when we try and bring life and art into a relationship. Both of the sequences in Deformations were planned quite carefully. I worked through themes that I wanted to take on, discussions I wanted to have with myself, and I tried to bring those all into a, a sequence. The structuring principle and the relationship between the original material and what I ended up with was quite important to me. So I was constantly looking back at what I'd drawn my work from and trying to relate to it um, freshly each time I came to writing. As a result, the book has a sort of feeling, at least for me, that it was all written at the same time because the preoccupations just kept rising up and rising up. And it all feels very, very interwoven. And that was the effect I wanted to create. What I did in this book, which is unusual for me, is I looked at visual effects on the page so I have a poem which is a form, a shape on the page, and the Pity Sad poems, some of those poems were also shaped. They have, there is a poem in there which is supposed to resemble, for example, a broken Grecian urn. Um, and I played a lot with different conventions. I looked at the conventions of Romanticism, of ancient Greek poetry, and I tried to use those to write something that was completely contemporary, complete, completely modern, but yet had some origin in those traditions. When I sit down and write a poem, I think I'm absolutely absorbed by the poem and what the poem needs from me. And that's the relationship that's really important to me, writing to the poem and finding out what the poem wants to do and how I can best fulfill that. And the same is true of the book. I help when I was shaping the book, I had a very strong sense of the book wanting certain things and needing certain things. And I think that probably my first allegiance is to, to that, is to shaping something which is coherent, which is its own organic whole, its own, in, has its own integrity in effect. I'm really pleased to be on the shortlist and 
perhaps primarily because this book, um, of all the books that I've written, was written in a sense for other people and it has the epigraph for the insignificant and that epigraph was quite important to me. In fact, it was in my head as I was thinking about the, the poems and where they were coming from and who they were representing. Both sequences look at the ways in which certain voices are suppressed or silenced or disappear entirely. And in both cases, I wanted to bring those voices back and try to recreate their experiences again. So it is vitally important that really is an act of rebalancing that, that voices are heard in history, but also in myth and culture that haven't hitherto been um, given much space or time or light.